Hey y'all, this is Collard Valley Cooks, and you've come to the right place to learn how to cook like Mama did. This vegetable soup is using vegetables out of our garden. It is a heart healthy, wonderful, and delicious supper that you are sure to enjoy. If you're new to the channel, we welcome you, and we sure hope you hit that subscribe button. And for all of our viewers, you know we love you. You can see that the peelings just slide right off the tomato. It's such an easy way to peel a tomato instead of using a knife and uh, wasting some of the good pulp. So it just it just comes. I just dropped that piece. <laughs> it just comes right off. That pretty little tomato, garden Roma. It's a garden Roma. While you've got this water boiling that you boiled your tomatoes in, it's a good time to boil some eggs to have in the refrigerator or to throw in some pasta and make some pasta um, to have for another dish. I mean, why not just throw it in there and get it started and put it in the refrigerator so you can have it later. I think I'm gonna throw in some pasta noodles right quick and um, let that continue to boil since I've already heated it up for the house in the summer. May as well use it, right? All right, we got a few peas from the garden we're gonna use in our soup. And so those are ready. I don't have to do anything to those. Um, I am going to chop up a little bit of celery to go in it. And you're gonna to wanna to chop it small enough to go in your spoon. I've got a carrot we're gonna chop up. One ought to be plenty, if it's a big one. If you got little bitty carrots, then cut up two of them. And I've told y'all, when I was growing up, Mama didn't have a cutting board, and Mama didn't use a big chef knife either. She used a paring knife for everything, for the most part, and she would have just cut that up with her hand, you know, in a paring knife. Uh, but it is nice to have a chopping block. I really like this one. Uh, this is some little sweet pepper out of the garden, just a, like a banana pepper. I'm going to let the seeds and all go in there because I like it. It's going to add just a little bit of flavor. Uh, I'm not going to use a lot of it, just a couple of them. I've got some red ones, but I don't want to put them in there because I don't want my soup to be hot. If you want your soup to be hot, then throw some in there. Um, we've got us an onion. And you don't have to put the whole onion in there. Or you can. Either way you want to do it. I'm not going to because I don't have that many onions and I got many recipes to make this week. So I'm going to use half of this onion in my soup. And you're just going to chop it kind of big for soup. It don't have to be real little. Now if you want a potato in your soup, you can cut you up a potato and I think I'll probably put one in my soup because I like them. And if you don't have any fresh vegetables, you can use frozen or even some canned vegetables if you have them. Um, any vegetables better than no vegetable at all, whether it's canned or not. Canned vegetables have plenty of nutrients. They may not have as much fiber because they're nice and soft. But I know one thing, uh, they're supposed to be canned at their peak of freshness. So, um, those nutrients are in that can. And a lot of people rinse off their vegetables out of a can. And when you do that, you're rinsing off the good stuff because you really need to be eating the juice because that's where a lot of their nutrients went. Now this cabbage has been in the refrigerator chopped for a while, so it's kind of black looking on the edge where I cut it. So I'm cutting that part off and not putting it in our soup. Let me go rinse it off. Now some people put noodles in their soup uh, my granny used, not my granny, but my mama did. So if you want to put some noodles in your soup, uh, instead of using potatoes, you should use noodles. Because either way, you know, you're getting a starch. Um, so it's probably better if you just use one or the other, not both. Well, that's the rind of it. We won't put that in there. There's a, some cabbage to go in the soup. We've got these peas. Now you can put in a few uh, pieces of okra if you got them in, out of the garden. 
We sure like them. I wish I had some corn. I may throw in some uh, frozen shoe pan corn. This is a cast iron wok that somebody got me and sent it to me as a gift. They got it on QVC and it's really nice. They were about out of them, so I don't know if you can get your hands on one or not. Um, it's a cast iron. It's really heavy, so if if you have a hard time picking up stuff, you don't want to get this pan, I can promise you. But it's really nice. It's really heavy. It's coated with a nonstick coating, and um, I'm going to use it for our soup today. I really like it. I'm still young enough. It doesn't bother me to pick it up, but if you have a hard time picking up stuff, you definitely couldn't pick this up and pour it out into something so you wouldn't want to use it to make gravy or something like that that you've got to pour it out of okay so you want to make something like uh, a roast or soup or something like that that you can just serve out of the pot and use my cold water okay and put, put it in here with my tomatoes and while it's still cold I'm gonna chop those up a little bit with a paring knife. Now I did stop the main cook of these so that they would be a little bit more whole. And some of you may wanna take the top part of the tomato off. I don't mind it, it's just a little more fiber to me. They're definitely edible. These aromas, they don't have a big uh, stem end. And you got to be fast at doing this or your water's going to get hot and you're not going to be able to pick up your tomato. Or just don't turn the heat on underneath it until you get your tomato sliced up. might be the smartest thing to do. Because all I got is one more to do and it's about too hot for me to pick it up. So I'll just hold it up for a second. <laughs> what a pretty tomato. That one was a little bit on the green side so it held its shape really nice. Now you can add anything to soup. That's the fun part about making soup. You can throw in cilantro and Mexican flavors and let it be a Mexican soup. You can throw in just regular garden vegetables and let it be a vegetable soup, um, a garden vegetable soup. You can throw in chicken. Um, you can throw in beef. You can, you can do anything with soup. That's the fun part about it. Today, I'm just making a garden soup. So this is our carrot our cabbage, our peppers, and onion going in. If you can't have a lot of salt, then use something like Mizra's Dash. or Make sure you put some um, different spices in there that you like to kind of um, give it more flavor without it having to be real salty. I'm going to add some um, Goya salad and vegetable seasoning. Now this does, I think, I'll look. Um, some of you can have it, some of you can't. Y'all know your diet, I don't. I know I can have it. But if you can't have it for some reason because of the ingredients, then just use salt and pepper or use a salt substitute. I'm gonna put some beef bouillon in here. If you can't have the MSG, then you can buy, I think better than bouillon uh, doesn't have it in there. You need to look at it though when you're in the store and you can substitute that for my favorite, which is Noor beef bouillon. Um, I'm gonna throw a little bit of this in there. And remember, even if it says that it's really high in sodium, you're not gonna, you're gonna, not gonna eat that much sodium in one serving. So keep that in mind too. This is four servings in here. But I want it to have a, a bit of a beef flavor, so I'm going to put that in there. And that way, it's much, it's much better for you to eat the beef flavor than it is to have the actual beef. And I might can get by with not putting the hamburger in there if I give it a bit of a beef flavor for Chris. Mm, that's good already. I can already taste the onion and those spices, and it tastes really good. We're going to add our peas from the garden. I am not a big fan of sweet corn in my soup, so I like to buy what they call shoe peg white corn. It is not a sweet corn, and I really like it. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that, not a whole lot, because that's just another starch as well. 
And as for now, we're going to put the lid on it and let it simmer and do its thing. And all the vegetables will mix in together. And it's going to taste really good. All right, we've got some Mizra's Dash. If you cannot have the Goya seasoning or the um, other seasoning that I used, you can always throw in some salt-free Mrs. Dash. I like to put it in there anyway because I like the flavor of it. And so we're going to put some in here right quick. I had it on high, but I just put it on low, and we're going to cover it and just let it cook for a little while. We got our cornbread nice and brown, y'all. Look at there, look at there. And we made it a little bit different, so if you press like it, I'm gonna show you the recipe. I was making a video out of it. So we're gonna dip this homemade, homemade, <laughs> well it's homemade, and it's home grown a lot of the vegetables, um, vegetable soup for tonight's supper into our pot. crazy dog. She likes to bark when we go turn on the camera. I wonder why lots of times we keep them put up when we're videoing and that's why if they could behave and not bark the whole time. I really need to put more juice in this in this um, soup. I like a lot of juice in my soup. Do you? I sure do. Goes good with the cornbread, don't it? Cat says, yes it does. Everybody's talking tonight. So we're gonna slice this open. Nice and crunchy, that's for sure. And we're gonna see if we like it. I have no idea if it's gonna be good. But we're about to find out. Biggest change I made in the cornbread is I use olive oil and I use um, that yogurt because it tastes so much like buttermilk. I really wanted to try it with it and see if I like it. Pretty good. You know what? For those of y'all that like um, hot water cornbread, you don't like any kind of cornbread. Because <laughs> all it is is hot water and cornmeal. Right? All right, so we're going to put this with our soup. Look at that pretty soup. Don't it look good? Fresh tomatoes, peas. And I didn't put a potato in it, and I was going to put pasta in it, uh, and then I didn't do either one. So it's truth vegetable soup. All right, so we're going to give it a taste. It's got the sheep had corn and everything. Y'all saw how I put it together. And um, it's going to be really good. I know it. Good and hot, too. It is good. It's amazing to me how sweet tomatoes are. Like that soup doesn't have any sugar in it. I didn't put any sweet corn in it, and it's very sweet because of the tomatoes. And it's a good supper. So, we will see y'all next time on Card Valley Cooks. Cooking soup, like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya. All right, the first thing I'm doing is I'm bringing my water to a boil in this pot and we are going to blanch uh, well I'm not, really not going to blanch them I'm just going to take the skins off of them some tomatoes because I really want them mostly in, as the juice okay so these are out of the garden and they need to be cooked we're going to make a good healthy lunch with them I'm taking a knife and I just put a little X across the bottom I'm just using the ripest ones out of my bowl since they need to be cooked and I am going to uh, throw them in some boiling water until the peelings start peeling back. It only takes 
a couple of minutes once they once they hit that boiling water. Okay, and uh, I'm not going to make a huge pot of soup uh, because I don't want to eat it, a ton of it. It's just me and Chris here, and so I'm not going to make. Um, I might make enough for two servings a piece, but I'm not going to make a big pot of soup. Three. When you cook and you're wanting to cook for two, many times instead of going by a recipe, when you're doing the actual ingredients, if you'll just kind of take into consideration how much you're putting in to start with and how many servings you think that would be, uh, it helps you put something together like soup so that you don't wind up with this huge pot of soup and, uh, and, and you don't want to eat it every day for a week, you know, so... Just use your discretion. See, I think that's more than enough tomatoes for a couple of servings a piece for us. And um, this is my small bowl. Well, this is actually my medium bowl out of my Pyrex set. There's three sizes. People are always asking me what size things are, and I have no idea uh, how much they actually hold and what size they are. Um, it's just my medium bowl <laughs> and my Pyrex set, okay? Um, so there we have those, and as soon as this comes to a boil, um, we're gonna drop them in, and they're gonna peel back. We're gonna peel off those um, skins. Takes me a minute, and we're gonna start our soup. It's All right, this is starting to boil, so I'm going to drop these down in there, and as soon as those peelings start peeling back, we're gonna peel these tomatoes, and we're going to get our soup started this morning. Okay, that's quick, and it, and they're ready. They have started peeling back, and this is going to be the juice in our soup. It's going to be uh, tomato-based, and we can put a little bouillon in there for some flavor. I do want a few um, tomato chunks in my soup, okay? So we'll put a little water over these. Rinse some good and some cold water. It helps stop that cooking process. And if you don't do this, they're just going to continue to cook and get softer and softer. And they're pretty much just going to be juice. Now, I like the seeds and stuff in my tomatoes and in my soup. But if for some reason you do not, you can strain the seed off. But like I said, I really like it. So I'm not going to do that with mine. So just continue to put some cold water over them as you uh, peel the peelings off. 